everyone, my name is Natalie. So today is another Victober related video. So this is something that I've been wanting to do for the last two years at least, uh, and it's something that I've been thinking about each year that Victober comes around. Um, that is that I really, of course, a lot of you will already know that I love nonfiction, and I love lo love a lot of different kinds of nonfiction, but. Uh, in particular, I've recently been getting into reading some science type uh, nonfiction, and of course, I have a specific soft spot for um, nature writing. So, that is something that is well known about me, I think. Um, and with the last few years of October, I've really wanted to read more. Victorian nonfiction, like nonfiction published during the Victorian era. I think a lot of the time when we think of Vic Victorian literature, we think of novels and sometimes poetry or plays, but very rarely do I hear people talk about nonfiction from the Victorian era, um, especially outside of the diaries and letters and sort of personal uh, stories that we sometimes see. Uh, it's very rare to see sort of science type related stuff and especially with female writers because of course one of the classics from the Victorian era of nonfiction and science is Charles Darwin. So what I wanted to do today is to bring your attention to uh, some Victorian female scientists who published books on some kind of scientific um, topic. And these are uh, women that I have not read myself without, with one exception, um, and that I am hoping to read um, some of these women during Victober this year. All of the books that I mention are available through archive.org uh, as digitalized versions, so you can find them as ebooks. Um, for free and widely accessible all, all over the world, I think. Uh, so I will leave the link to each book's um, ebook version uh, in the description in case you are also interested in reading some of these books. So first up is the woman that st started this for me. Uh, a few years ago I started looking for uh, Victorian female scientists and nature writers because I knew that that was a thing but for some reason I never heard anyone talk about the, these women and uh, these writers in general. And so I found Eliza Brightwen who was born in 1830 and lived until 1906. She was a Scottish naturalist, she was self-taught and she was known as sort of one of the biggest, uh, one of the most popular naturalists of her day. And so the first book that she published was Wild Nature One by Kindness, uh, which is a book that I read for Victoria, I think, two years ago. And I really enjoyed it. It's basically a nature writing book collecting various observations that she's done of the kind of animals around her. She definitely seems to have a particular soft spot for birds. And because I enjoy that so much, I actually uh, sourced out her next book, which is more about wild nature. So I, as you can see, this is um, actually a vintage edition, and I think this was published at the end of the Victorian era. It has an inscription um, from 1895. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but this is just a continuation of the theme of the first book. So that is, this is a, a book that I am definitely going to try to get to this October. And this was published in 1892. The next woman I want to talk about is Catherine Parr Trail, born in 1802 and died in 1899. She was an English-Canadian author and she uh, apparently wrote a lot about life in Canada and was known as um, or considered as a pioneer of Canadian natural history. Um, and she had a particular interest in botany, so that is one of the reasons that I'm interested in reading her work. Um, she came from a family of writers, which I think those kinds of things are quite interesting to see how these women came to writing in the first place and also coming uh, into writing from a need of money. The book that uh, I am interested in by her is called Pearls and Pebbles or Notes of an Old Naturalist, which was published in 1894 and um, it seems like it's just sort of a, a collection of various observations that she's made over a lifetime of work. 
The next woman is Mary Somerville. She was born in 1780 and lived until 1872. She was a Scottish polymath and she was active in a lot of various scientific areas, in particular uh, mathematics and astronomy. And she has actually the same birthday as me. It's the kind of thing that I get stuck on. <laughs> she was nominated as the first female member of the Royal Astrono Astronomical Society around the same time as Caroline Herschel, which is definitely a, a, a name that I recognize in terms of science and especially uh, women's history in sciences. And so she has a few books that I'm interested in potentially reading. So we have Physical Geography, which was published in 1848, uh, which is sort of seems to be covering various areas like geography and climate and ecology, especially um, with a little bit of biology. So you can see the polymath side of her. Uh, the next potential is On Molecular and Microscopic Science, uh, published in 1869, which is about physics and uh, biology, uh, from the very small kind of living organisms to bigger um, creatures. And the last book, book title is Personal Recollections from Early Life to Old Age, uh, published in 1874, and this seems to have been sort of published um, posthumously by her daughter and sort of her daughter filling in some of the gaps of her life. So it seems like that book is sort of a autobiography slash a memoir. Um, of her work and that could also be really interesting to get a sense of what it's like to to be a, a scientist during this time as a woman. Um, I, I'm assuming that it will at least in part touch on the sort of environment and context that she was working in. The next woman I want to talk about is Marion Newbiggin, uh, born in 1869 and died in 1934. Uh, she's another Scottish woman uh, and she was a geographer, biologist and writer. She worked uh, as an editor on the Scottish Geographical magazine. Uh, she had uh, she had a proper education, she, so she had sort of an official education, um, which was very unusual at this time. She was also a lecturer as um, when she was done with her own uh, education. The book that I'm interested in by her is probably one of the ones that I'm most interested in out of all of these, and that is Color in Nature, by uh, published in 1898, and it is basically the, it's a study of biology uh, in the terms of the colors that you can find in the natural world, and I thought that, that sounded beautiful and interesting, and sort of a, a kind of overlap with the sciences and arts. That is something that I feel like is um, quite strongly a, a strong theme from the Victorian era. The last woman I wanted to mention is Alice Blanche Balfour, born in 1850 and died in 1936. So she was another Scottish woman and she was an entomologist, a naturalist, and a pioneer in genetics. And she had a particular interest in zebra's skin pattern, which is something that I've actually mentioned very recently in connection with one of the books that I read in August. And the, the tessellation that that is called, the pattern, um, and the way that the, the skin pattern continues so that it's difficult to, to notice individual zebras um, for predators. The book that she has published that I'm interested in is 1200 Miles in a Wagon, uh, published in 1895, and this seems to have been a travelogue. Um, so those are the women and the books specifically that I wanted to mention uh, as potential reads for me for Victober this year or books that you might be interested in checking out if you want to uh, explore Victorian female scientists or just the sciences of this time in general. Um, I think it, it, I've been doing a lot of research specifically starting with Scottish uh, female scientists because um, it was just somewhere to start. So a lot of the women in this list are Scottish and so I think I might do a second part to this list 
uh, focusing more on English female scientists if I find enough people uh, that you can actually find the, the books available as well. Uh, so I hope that this has been helpful if you have been looking for more uh, women to check out for Victober reading, especially the non-fiction side of things, and get an, uh, a sense of the Victorian era from another perspective. I think it's so... the Victorian era is so rich in so many different aspects. So that was all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Victober and would love to know if you have any recommendations for Victorian female scientists that I haven't mentioned. Definitely let me know in the comments and uh, also let me know if you've read um, any of these books or any of these women before. I would love to know about that as well. I hope you're doing well and you're taking care of yourself. I will talk to you soon.